My mural collective and I were recently commissioned to do a mural for Peculiar Slurp, a gourmet ramen restaurant in downtown Scranton. Hopefully this video will be helpful if you're looking to get into murals yourself, or if you're just curious as to the process of how a mural is made from beginning to end. I decided to document the, uh, the entire process from the sketch, to the, uh, the concept art, to the actual painting of the mural, and then finally the installation. My hope is that you find this helpful, or at least interesting, and if there's anything else I missed in the video that you'd like covered next time, please let me know in the comments below. So the first step with any mural project, of course, is coming up with the actual design. So, you have to figure out what the client wants, why they want the mural, where it's going to go. You should factor in things like the location, the shape of the wall. These are all going to be super important when you're planning your actual design out. I decided to go with a female chef cutting ingredients and have the ingredients sort of floating everywhere to give it like a nice dynamic uh, circular composition. Once the sketch was finished, we pitched it to the client and uh, they approved right away. We decided to paint this mural off-site and install it later. We painted on a 4x8 sheet of plywood with a smooth finish. Open the door. What? Just what? Open the door. What? <laughs> what? Open the door. As always, the first step uh, is just to project my sketch right onto the wall or onto the, uh, the mural surface. You don't need to use a projector to transfer your design carefully onto the wall. You could also use a doodle grid, there's tons of videos on that if you search that up. And you could always use freehand. I just prefer the projector because it saves time and uh, there's no surprises when I'm trying to transfer the design. Once the design was projected, uh, I painted it in the background with a blue gradient. I was very careful not to put the blue over anything that was going to be light colored like the skin, the wood, the white outfit. Uh, I could have done the entire background blue first, but then I would have been fighting the blue pigment the entire time putting my paint down. I'd have to do multiple layers just to cover up that blue, which looks cool sometimes in like oil painting, but for this specific thing, I didn't want that effect at all. Once the background was done, it was just a matter of rendering each area one at a time. That's how I like to work personally. Some people like to work across the whole painting at once. I like to just focus on little areas one by one by one and just get the painting finished that way. I'm pretty happy with the choice of doing this mural as an installation. It gave me time to work on it comfortably in my own home without having to make the commute to the restaurant every time I wanted to paint. But there were also challenges with it. Firstly, and most notably, uh, it did not fit in my house. The ceilings in my house are like seven feet tall, this thing's eight feet tall. So I had to paint the entire thing sideways, uh, which wasn't too difficult, but a couple things got wonky. In the end, it wasn't a huge deal. There was just a couple things that became more difficult, like facial symmetry, cast shadow, lighting directions, balance light. Things like that are just slightly harder to calculate and figure out when you're working at a 90 degree uh, rotation. But for the most part, it went smoothly. I wanted a smooth, blended look for most of the paint in this project. Something that really helps with achieving that look is using modifier paint mediums. Uh, I use a golden slow dry medium. I mix that into all my colors so they, uh, they dry much slower, they blend smoother. The only downside is that this product gives off a strong chemical smell so I'd highly recommend either being in a well ventilated area or wearing a full respirator while you're working. that really helps, especially when working on larger pieces, is to step back frequently. Make sure you're seeing your design from far away. Every once in a while I even recommend taking a photograph of it and flipping it so you see it like mirrored. Uh, there might be a mistake that, you, that you're not able to see until you see it backwards. So I ended up doing that and I saw that my right eye was just completely wonked. Uh, I had to completely repaint it. I'm glad that I caught that myself before anybody saw it. But 
it helps to check your design from time to time. When you're right up on a large design like this, it's almost impossible to see small errors like that. important part of mural painting is protecting and sealing your image once it's completed to make sure that the piece has longevity and doesn't fade or get messed up over time. So this specific piece is indoors so I don't need a crazy shell or finish on it. I don't need a graffiti proof coating, anything like that. It's going to be near a window so I definitely want some sort of UV protective coating on it so to keep the colors from fading and bleaching out over time. I ended up using a Montana spray paint matte varnish. Super easy to use and it's compatible with all the supplies, paints, and pigments that I use. Be careful when you're selecting your varnishes and clear coats. Certain polyurethanes will react poorly with certain inks. They might smear your image once you paint them up. I always recommend doing a small test patch on a small inconsequential area on the mural or on another piece. After the installation and the mural was completed, I asked the client to say a few words about the project. Hey guys, it's great to see you. Thank you so much. We're super excited to have the Northeast Art Project and our beautiful new art installation here at Peculiar Slayer, soon to be Peculiar Kitchen. We are super excited to expand what we're doing here and uh, just keep incorporating local and fun and fresh and different and we're just trying to make our joint the coolest spot in uh, downtown Scranton. So we thank you guys, uh, Eric. This is unbelievable. We named her uh, Mona, and I think she's an amazing addition to the Peculiar family. about it. Huge thanks to Gene at Peculiar Slurp for the opportunity. Huge thanks to Ryan Nat for building the frame and priming the board. Check out Northeast Art Project, my mural collective, link in the description. Lastly, if you wanted to purchase any merch or learn more about my practice, uh, check out my website, ericbussart.com, link in the description below. I'll even be selling signed limited edition prints of this mural on 12 by 18 gloss sheets, so definitely check that out in the store. If there's anything about my process that I missed, please let me know in the comments below. I'll try to address it in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.